BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Nerd 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Well, welcome to a segment here on BBOR that we call Genius or Fraud. It's been a while since we've done this particular segment. We've been caught up with a lot of the true crime cases, and I will say that we have something very big coming out on the Zodiac Killer tomorrow. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, now is a good time to do so. And you can follow along with a lot of our true crime discussions, things about serial killers, the Zodiac Killer. But of course, here on BBOR, any subject is fair game. And once again, you can always like and subscribe. Okay, so going on to today's subject, we're going to be talking about Dr. Jordan Peterson. This was a genius or fraud segment that I've wanted to do for quite some time, but I really thought that it would, it would only be appropriate to do this after Jordan Peterson was back involved with his normal life. And he put out a video on his channel, Jordan B. Peterson, that he was now going to be resuming some of his academic as well as uh, media pursuits. He he was battling some very serious issues, dealing with some health problems. And I would say, though, throughout the duration of this recording, we're not going to touch upon any of his health conditions, except for maybe one small thing that we'll say at the end. And in the segment Genius or Fraud, we really try to a ask and answer the question, is this person trying to deceive us for profit or for fame and fortune? Or is this person a genuine believer in what they say? And maybe they just have some things that are difficult for other people to accept. When we do this segment, I find that a lot of the comments that come in are people just saying, hey, wait a second, he also believes this. Or, hey, wait, she also believes that. We might not cover every single piece of info that is in a person's platform. But the big thing we want to focus in on is, are they truthful or are they fraudulent? So uh, let's have a discussion about Dr. Jordan Peterson, the psychologist from Canada, University of Toronto professor, as well as uh, working with a host of other universities. And Peterson um, also studied at McGill University. And he really became famous um, on the Internet because he, he stood up to Canada's Bill C-16 talking about, you know, like um, non-binary gender pronouns. And um, I guess it would be sort of a compelled speech law. And I don't even think we should focus in on that, those two things because I think that there's something else that we can mention. Peterson is the author of two books, Maps of Meaning, which is all about the architecture of belief, the psychology of belief, as well as 12 Rules for Life, which you see here, which is the antidote to chaos. Uh, some things that we can say about how people will be able to live in ways in which someone can make their life better or way to go down a more virtuous pathway. So um, I think that that's a good thing to begin with now, talking about the material that it is, that is in his two books. And when you get into Maps of Meaning, that really deals with a lot of things associated with religion, but not only what religion is. However, it's more about how do people believe, like what is the underlying structure of the belief system? And I think that that is something that often gets neglected from the conversations when people are mentioning Jordan Peterson. They really just want to be so literal. And they forget that as a psychologist, he's talking about how things function as opposed to simply what is going on on the surface. But with 12 Rules for Life, let's look at some claims that Jordan Peterson has made. And what are things that we can say, you know, maybe in contrast, in comparison, as well as what are what do other people have to say about Dr. Jordan Peterson and his 12 Rules for Life? Let's read them first. 12 Rules for Life. Number one, stand up straight with your shoulders back. Number two, treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. Number three, Befriend people who want the best for you. Number four, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. That's interesting the way this one is written. I almost think that they've misquoted that one, uh, but um, because I think that one comes in a variety of different ways. Number five, do not let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. Number, number six, set your house in perfect order before you criticize the world. Number seven, pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. Number eight, tell the truth or at least don't lie. Number nine, assume that the person you are listening to might know something you don't. Number 10, be precise in your speech. Number 11, do not bother children while they are skateboarding. And number 12, pet a cat when you encounter one in the street. Okay, now, um, now as far as number 12, you might get rabies or something if you get too close to stray cats. That's one thing. But in all seriousness, what are some things that we can say about this one? The YouTube... um 
former therapist Daniel Mackler, I mean, we say the former therapist turned YouTuber Daniel Mackler addressed number five very specifically. When he did a response to Dr. Jordan Peterson, he made the bold claim that he thoroughly wholeheartedly disagreed with number five. Do not let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. What we can say about that one is that Mackler's claim was that sometimes children are going to be expressing behaviors that are totally healthy, that are totally normal, that are totally expected, and parents are not going to like what they are doing. The whole concept of exploring the senses, as well as pushing boundaries, as well as just doing things that are different than what the parents have and their expectation of how they should be. And it's a totally normal and even healthy behavior that the kid is doing, but the parents will still get somewhat upset about it or that they might not like what they are doing. So do not do anything that makes your um, makes your kid uh, dislike you. Um, that is one thing that Daniel Mackler thoroughly challenges, saying that that is just an inevitable reality. And it's also something that um, is um, perhaps a little bit misconstrued in the 12 Rules for Life. The other point, though, that Daniel Mackler brought up addressing number five was that Jordan Peterson very frequently talks about rebelling against the concept of tyranny. Lots of people say we need to rebel against tyranny. Tyranny is bad. That's not such a controversial statement. But for a child looking at a parent or a teacher, these can be viewed as tyrannical entities, especially when the parent is talking in a very tyrannical way. And then this gets into Eric Neumann and such about benevolence and tyranny, which Peterson does address very clearly. And he talks about all of this stuff, the great mother and such. So when um, we are looking at uh, this, I mean, I think I would definitely have to lean to more toward Mackler's claim because it, it, it allows for a higher sense of openness. I do have to tell you, if we're doing the genius or fraud segment, when it comes to Dr. Jordan Peterson, I got into his things in 2017 because a lot of his videos were going around on the Internet. Then in 2018, there was the Kathy Newman debate. So you're saying, so you're saying, so you're saying. And I watched that one over and over again. I mean, I saw it three times, once to find out what was actually going on, and the second to find out what was really going on because she kept putting words in his mouth. So I was like, wait, now what, what actually was his point? Because she kept trying to... um insert his, her ideas into the situation. So you're saying this and such. But um, then the third time, I just watched it to learn how does the argumentative structure function. And then after that, I was hooked into Jordan Peterson's world. And I would say that I've never found a psychologist on YouTube I, that was speaking more directly to me, just using the big five personality traits, the big five character traits, just using the big five op openness um, to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism represented by Ocean. Dr. Todd Grande also talks about this, and we'll say something about um, Dr. Todd Grande and his response to Dr. Jordan Peterson. Um, Todd Grande did a video in response to Peterson, but he, his claims were more about, um, he was using a lot of Peterson's material out of context. And it was very hard to know just as somebody is monologuing, you know, and that was so somebody really called him out in the comments section saying, hey, you're criticizing Dr. Jordan Peterson, but you aren't providing the context in which he's making these statements. For example, Todd Grande was saying that Dr. Jordan Peterson said when someone breaks up from a relationship and they have a traumatic experience after they've broken up with their significant other, they can experience behaviors in the brain that are similar to that of what someone would experience with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And Dr. Todd Grande thoroughly shot that down, saying that is not something that is ex that is accepted by the psychological community, by psychologists, by the medical community. So what he's saying is that sometimes Peterson goes in a direction that is um, beyond the limits of acceptable psychological agreement, like beyond the limits of the psychological community. But um, I think the reason why he got called out on that, Todd Grande got caught, called out on that, was for a very simple reason. They're saying, number one, he didn't provide the clip with context. Number two, it's also, there's a very big difference between saying that something is similar to this and saying that something is exactly the same thing. Say somebody has a bad breakup, saying that that type of emotional response is similar to experiencing post-traumatic stress disorder is not the same thing as saying that it is exactly the same as what is going on with post-traumatic stress disorder. Similar, same thing. These are very different terms. I mean, I think that that kind of goes without saying, but just uh, bringing that to the uh, discussion here, because people say a lot of things about Dr. Jordan Peterson. If we're going to go back to 12 rules for life, there's some other ones that we have here. Befriend people who want the best for you. I think that that is not reiterated enough. But um, in with the second one, number two, treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. 
The only thing I can say about that is with your own personal body, and I've never heard this from any other person criticizing Jordan Peterson. It's just my own original response to the 12 rules for life. When you look at this one, it's like, He's saying something here that says, treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. When you're dealing with your own individual body, you have a certain right of liberty with yourself. You can do certain things to yourself that you could not do to other people. I mean, you can do certain things to your body that you could not do to someone else's body. And this is a true thing. I've actually thought about this, about um, doing sort of like a mock pro wrestling video using some barbed wire and broken glass for Instagram TV. And you can follow BlackBoxNet88 on Instagram if you'd like. And I I don't necessarily know when that's going to happen because I need some people standing by and such. And, you know, like it's going to that I would never let a child that I was taking care of do uh, like a wrestling video involving broken glass and barbed wire. But if this is something that I want to do for myself in a purely, you know, videographic fashion that is not meant to cause any intentional self-harm, but rather just to do something that's going to be very superficial and you know, like it's just going to be for display and it's just for a production. I mean, you have a certain sense of liberty about what you can do to yourself that you cannot do to other people. And um, furthermore, we don't treat adults the same way that we treat children. And this gets into a lot of the discussions that you can have in circles when they're talking about non-aggression. The entire concept of children are subject to laws and principles in a different way than that of adults. So um, to treat yourself like someone you're responsible for helping I mean, it would really depend on, I mean, are you treating a child that way or are you treating an adult that way? And also, I mean, if I were responsible for helping somebody, would I necessarily encourage them to do something like making a video where they're going to be breaking a bunch of glass and cutting themselves with barbed wire? I'm not necessarily sure. Do I have the right to do that from with for myself? Absolutely. Right to individuality and um you know, freedom of expression, individual expression and such. Another point where um, I've never really heard too many people criticize Dr. Jordan Peterson is associated with his stances on free speech. As we said, he became famous because he was standing up to compelled speech laws. But one of the points that he also said was that um, he was being very critical of the SJWs, the social justice warriors. Not many people like SJWs that are outside of that uh, compound, except for maybe Dr. Richard Carrier. But when we want to talk about SJWs and such, Jordan Peterson even addressed the people who are simply criticizing uh, corporations, the people who are criticizing those who pollute. And what he said was that if you are holding a sign, waving it at a corporation, that's not taking environmentalism seriously. Spending 80 hours on that for the rest of your life that's taking it seriously. And until then, don't go waving a sign at a corporation. So um, in that particular instance, he simply told people to stop speaking. It's like it's like you only need to use your voices when you are in a particular setting or when they've met his standard, when they've met his expectation, when they've actually achieved the standard that he desires for them, then it's OK to have, you know, the un less restriction on free speech. And jo Dr. Jordan Peterson is somebody who is very um, critical of college students. And I heard this on a particular video, and I'm not even sure the name of the YouTube or else I would cite the source. It's not my own original claim, but one guy was just saying Jordan Peterson views college students as a bunch of brats like that was his claim and that's why he's saying that he actually really doesn't seem to like college students too frequently but um the reason why he's saying that is that, like peterson makes a lot of claims such as if you're 18 years old you don't know anything six years ago you were 12 if you're 19 years old you don't know anything seven years ago you were 12 and the reason why i have to take an exception to that particular one is more because when someone is 18 or 19 Maybe you'll remember what it's like being in that time, or if you are in that age demographic right now, it's not that you don't know anything. And I mean, you definitely don't know as much as you think you do, but nothing. I mean, if you're going into college, like some of Jordan Peterson's university students, they've been through 13 years of education and just telling being told that you do not know anything. Once again, that creates that whole thing about rebelling against tyranny, which Peterson does encourage. However, at the same time, when we want to explore this particular issue, it's more about how um, it's almost an ineffective standpoint that I would say with that one. And if we're going to do the genius or fraud segment, I think it's very important for us to look at this from the example of does this person believe what he is saying or is he putting things out there that he does not believe? 
so he can sell books, so he could do the speaking tour, so he can be on television. And my simple response to that is that Jordan Peterson is somebody who spent an enormous amount of time studying analytics. He said that very clearly. When he was on the Joe Rogan podcast, he said that he learned how to monetize social justice warriors. Jordan Peterson is someone of above average intelligence. So if you want to talk about genius or fraud there, that answers one question. But when he's uh, when he is in that state of above average intelligence, he knows how to share ideas in a way that that will make a particular splash. And he's talked about this in his lectures, saying that he has, you know, helped people who are corporate individuals in advance their careers, assertiveness training, as well as just his his interpretations of the big five are just absolutely like excellent. I mean, they really gets, you know, to really learn about a person and how you function and such. But the thing is, though, he's not exactly a fraud. I mean, no, Jordan Peterson is not a fraud. He is very calculating. He is definitely somebody who knows how to present ideas in a particular way to get a desired effect from the general public. And Jordan, Peterson also said in one of his lectures that the tree, you know, like someone who is a truly accomplished person is a dangerous individual. Dangerous, but they are using their abilities in a good and virtuous way. Not someone who is just simply harmless and then says that it's good to be harmless. There's no virtue in that. And Peterson is a dangerous individual because he knows how to share ideas in a particular way that will get a desired outcome. When it comes to um, this particular concept, though, of his lectures, and we want to look at the subject of genius or fraud, there was um, this channel, The Majority Report, and a, a very precisely an individual on The Majority Report named Michael Brooks made a strong claim against Jordan Peterson, saying that not only does he, you know, put out words in a desire way to get a desired effect, but also he adds in certain types of mumbo jumbo. And this has to get away from 12 rules for life. It has to get away from anything political, but it has to go down the pathway of maps of meaning, talking more about the architecture of belief. And when you're going through Jordan Peterson's lectures, I would really like to cite the one that he did on the uh, movie Pinocchio and talking about how Pinocchio is, of course, I'm sure you know the story. He is swallowed by Monstro the Whale trying to get to Geppetto. And I'm watching Jordan Peterson do the lectures. By the way, always watch the full versions. These channels like Wisdom for Men and Essential Truth that just cut them up into 13 minute segments. That's not enough. You need the full thing to truly get the experience. And he's talking about, OK, so. Pinocchio gets swallowed by Monstro the whale. And in this instance, Pinocchio represents a fish. Oh, but um, I suppose Pinocchio is also the fisherman. Oh, wait. Hmm. Let's see. How are we going to do this? And then like he's just um ad living on the spot. He's improvising. And not every single thing that he says in his lectures is 100 percent certifiable. And I don't necessarily think that that's the way. I mean, believe it or not, when they're when Michael Brooks was calling him out, saying that he is introducing mumbo jumbo into his lectures. He didn't even highlight that example so much. But um, I mean, they were discussing that particular instance. But um, there's also one where Dr. Jordan Peterson says when the Chinese artwork shows two snakes twisting together, that it is the double helix of DNA. And it's like the human mind getting in touch with the human biology. I was looking for that exact clip because somebody left something in the comment section that said when Jordan Peterson was questioned about that double helix of DNA, that when like when ancient artwork shows two things twisting, is it actually representing the double helix of DNA? He said, I don't really mean that. I didn't really mean that, you know, meaning that um, he just made a claim that went a little bit too far. I was looking for that clip and I couldn't exactly find it, but it doesn't sound beyond belief because what I can definitely say about Dr. Jordan Peterson is he's very good at doing an in, at doing a solid monologue. But the thing is, though, at certain times he will improvise in a particular direction and it will not always come out the way he intended or that he, once again, he's making some things up on the spot when he's talking about the structure of belief. And one final claim is, once again, I don't remember who said this, but um, it was some YouTuber that was being very critical of him because they're saying that Jordan Peterson is a Jungian psychologist. You know, we have Carl um, Jung, we have Sigmund Freud, and then uh, like other people like B.F. Skinner. Peterson is very anti-B.F. Skinner. When it comes to Jung, um, Peterson is somebody who speaks very highly of him. He says that Jung was just perhaps one of the most intelligent people who ever lived. With Freud, Peterson says that 
Freud was wrong, but he was wrong in an interesting way. But like the, the claim about this was that Peterson teaches Jungian psychology as if it was on par with modern science, but a lot of it is experimental. And much to the claim, much to the way that Todd Grande made his claim, it is not accepted by the entire psychological community. When I was hearing that, I was like, well, obviously Peterson's doing that because he believes that it should be accepted by the uh, scientific community or that um, the scientific community is doing a lot of things that are going down that particular pathway. But in all reality, when we're looking at that particular angle, I mean, um, I think that it could go either way. I mean, I'm not really too beaten up about that because I find that the uh, material from Jung is absolutely fascinating and I just want to learn more and more about it. And we have interviews with Jung here on YouTube that you can see. And I wish we had some from Freud, but of course we do not. And the thing is, um, with Jung, like you can hear him in his own words and he's just, he's a very insightful individual. Like I was listening to one and every five minutes, I'm just learning this new piece of wisdom. So with Dr. Jordan Peterson, I can say in recap, I don't believe that he is a pure fraud. I believe that he is a very calculating, intelligent individual that knew how to put out his material in a desired way to get this level of stardom. He definitely wanted the fame. That was not accidental. He definitely wanted to share this message and to be a very famous best-selling author. That is not accidental. It's not some fluke that this guy just stood up to social justice warriors and then the media turned their attention onto him. Jordan Peterson knew exactly what he was doing and he got the desired outcome. He got to do the speaking tour and his health um, greatly declined because of that. And the thing, the only thing that I would say about his health issues is that there was a YouTuber, there is a YouTuber out there named John Sanmez who does the channel Bulldog Mindset. And he was being very critical of Dr. Jordan Peterson. Perhaps it was a trolling video, but what he is saying is, Dr. Jordan Peterson told people not to rely on outside substances, and Peterson got a addicted to benzodiazepines, and he was in rehab, and these are the health issues that I say that I would not talk about, because it's much more complicated than just being in rehab, and a lot of you are probably following the developments with Dr. Jordan Peterson over the past couple uh, months, maybe year and such, and what we would say about that is just that I mean, Peterson has never once said that he is anti-medication. This is another thing that I thought was actually somewhat valuable when Peterson is just saying it's not just throwing pills at people. There are other ways. And what he said about medication is medication is for somebody who has their life completely in order, that they are very well organized. They have the job. They have the relationship. They have life under control, but they're still feeling types of depression, or perhaps something else, like the way that Peterson was using benzodiazepines to deal with anxiety. They have the depression or anxiety, and then they try out this type of medication, and you'll know in a month whether or not it is working. So when it comes to that particular issue, I mean, Peterson has never been anti-medication. When he talks about being reliant on an outside substance, medication is off the table. And as you can see, perhaps even in this particular discussion that we've had right here, it's not always about a black and white issue. And this is why psychology is a social science. And this is why a lot of things that Dr. Jordan Peterson talks about, the architecture of belief or the 12 rules for life and such. I, and this is why we, you have to discuss them, because it's not purely black and white. There's an enormous gray area, and we have to navigate through the gray area to get closer to the truth. I think that was Sam Harris that said that the first time, first person I heard who said that one. But when we're looking at Dr. Jordan Peterson, I said that he's a calculating individual, but not everything that he does is wrong, because when I was 20 years old, eight years before that, I was 12. But when I was 20 years old, I was always wondering, why is it that older people are not trying to communicate with me in a way in which I can understand? And all I see is just a tyrannical, angry, older person saying, you have to live your life this way. Dr. Jordan Peterson provided an alternative to that by actually communicating with people in a way in which they could understand. But in that process, he perhaps did certain things that were um, deceptive. He perhaps said certain things that he didn't believe maybe 100%, and, but he did it for a good reason, maybe doing the wrong thing for the right reason. As I said, I don't necessarily believe that, um, you know, I believe that he misrepresented himself in certain ways, but he did it to connect with people in a way in which they could understand, to teach them about virtue and responsibility and sacrifice and all of the things that you can find in his lectures on YouTube. But I would, I would be very curious to know what anybody has to say about Dr. Jordan Peterson and any of the ideas that he has shared on YouTube. We can expand more in Maps of Meaning. You can talk about religion and Dr. Jordan Peterson's claims about that, as well as some more things about the 12 rules and the Big Five and Jung and Freud – 
What do you have to say about any of these types of materials? And if you just want to say bad things about Kathy Newman, I mean, I'm not going to stop you. I don't really like her either, and I don't think anyone does. But um, what do you, do you have to say about Dr. Jordan Peterson? And most importantly, with the genius or fraud segment, do you believe that he is completely truthful with everything that he says? Or do you believe that there are certain parts that are either not truthful or misrepresented? Or even, as we said, maybe certain parts are mumbo jumbo in some ways. What do you have to say about any of this material here? I would love to see your ideas in the comment section below. If you like this upload, you can hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you're welcome to do so. But most importantly, please share some comments. And if you want to follow any of our discussions on true crime and serial killers, we'll be doing something big on the Zodiac Killer on this channel. And, I, and to future listeners, I would invite you to check out any of that material as well. Until next time. I am.